This message was brought to you by Hustlers University. Sign up today where your real education begins. Quick announcement. There's a, a new webinar that kicks off tonight for the people in the Hustler Mindset Project and Hustler University. I'll put it out for the rest of you next week. But the deal is people have a problem with mistakes because some of the things that have happened lately got me to thinking and I was just like, I've had mistakes that were damn near debilitating, made some bad choices. The outcomes were ugly. But in every case, I learned something. That's the key thing, to learn something. And what I'm getting with a lot of people is that they don't want to make mistakes, don't want to make any errors, want to get the best deal, buy something that sells with little to no drama, no returns, don't deal with um, troublesome customers. I'm here to tell you that you're leading a life of delusion to think that you can escape all of that. You're pretty much a scared little bitch. But to be more powerful, to be more successful, mistakes are part of the game. They're, they're, it's just part of the landscape. You can't escape it. And so many people are afraid to make a mistake. I'll give you some examples of some stuff that happened. 2009, I was coming out of the storage auction business. Um, started doing YouTube, wrote the first book. A lot of people kind of like, hey, can I talk to you? Do you know what you're doing? How's that, how's that gonna look? You know, you're on YouTube, YouTube's for kids. How's that gonna look? You know, I think you're making a mistake. I mean, people who had my best interests at heart, so to speak, were purportedly looking out for me. They were worried about me because they thought I was going in the wrong direction. And you gotta kinda like learn to rock and roll with that stuff because I will say one thing for being on YouTube, having my book ripped apart on Amazon and all this other, I am way tougher than I ever was in my life. It's just certain things just that's just how it is. It's like, that's your opinion, so what? And going through that, all of that stuff, people telling me. Now, some people will tell me like, hey, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this. Like, you know, with the t-shirt thing. Um, there's a lot of people that think it's foolish. T-shirts are a multi-billion dollar business. Have been for a long time, always will be. I buy these things regularly. I'm not the only one. And also because, you know, I'm an adult, I'm not supposed to be wearing t-shirts, I'm supposed to have a, a button-down tie and everything. That's someone else's life, it's not mine. So, I love the t-shirts, and you will see a ton of stuff coming from this t-shirt deal. Ton of stuff. Especially on other channels. But, to get to the core of what I'm talking about, is mistakes are not personal. They're usually not an indicator of how smart or how stupid you are, unless you just do something purely stupid. But usually, it's a lack of the right information. Someone said, how do you have all of this information? I was doing a consult the other day, and it's like, how do you do these videos just boom? There's no teleprompter, there's no one standing there with cue cards. I'm rolling from the knowledge of my dome because I've made a lot of mistakes crazy mistakes just over the, just stupid stuff and i learned from all of those mistakes and what it, what happens when you make a lot of mistakes is you create a very large knowledge base of information the information may be good for a lifetime the information may be good for 30 days in any regard the information is good for a certain period of time what you choose to do or not do with that information is incumbent upon you. I bought a storage unit and it was a mistake. I was running someone up. This was around year two. 
You know, I had a little, had a little more cheese, a little bit more cheddar in my pocket. And I didn't like this person. Didn't like him at all. Couldn't stand his ass. Sometimes when he bit, if I just heard his voice, I just throw in the bit. Didn't even see the unit. That's how much I couldn't stand his ass. And we were up there's big unit, right? Killer unit. It's actually two 10 by 20s with the wall taken down. Two doors side by side. So really it's a 20 by 20. You understand? It's packed. Rooted to the two, the killer stuff. I didn't want it because I didn't know what the hell it was. I didn't know what that shit was. It was stuff from a printing shop. Screen, uh, soak screens, um, thermal presses, heat press, all kinds of stuff. I didn't know what this stuff was until I bought the unit and got it out there. So, pretty juicy unit. But because I couldn't stand his ass, kept going. 1500, 1600, 1700. Then for me, I just get real froggy and go 2,000. And at that point, he just looks at me. If looks could kill, I would have been sliced in 10 pieces and fell on the ground. Going once, going twice. And as quickly as I was happy for beating his ass, depression descended rapidly all over my body. Because I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? I didn't even know what it was. I was fucking with him. My goal was, because I knew he wanted it, and I miscalculated how much money he had, because I was like, yeah, I'll do $2,000, i am going to drop out. <laughs> Boom, the unit dropped on me. So, I didn't want to deal with it. I actually tried to sell the unit to someone around the corner for $1,500. bucks. did not want to deal with it. He's like, oh, hell no, you're not leading that shit on me, buddy. You bought it, you clean it, you load it, and walked off laughing. This was a massive, very expensive mistake. Such a mistake, I rented the unit because I didn't want to deal with it. It's like, I didn't, I didn't want to face it. I didn't want to deal with it. So about two weeks in, I have to go over there. I was like, I got to start doing something with this. Oh, God. My partner is like, well, can we make any money? I was like, I don't know. She's like, what do you mean? You know, I, I don't know. I just blew 2,000 bucks pissing and playing games with people. So... We go to the unit, we start pulling up stuff, and at this point, we, this was, you write stuff down and go home and look it up, because, you know, like I said, the internet wasn't like it is now. It was, the internet was there, but it wasn't as portable as it is now. So we get in there and we find some stuff, stuff's new, but once again, didn't know what the hell this stuff was. Uh, half the unit was brand new printing equipment. When we got home, we were like, whoa. Half the unit was used stuff, trash stuff, um, t-shirts, and some of the unit, there was a leak in the unit, so there was about 25% of the unit that had water damage that was going straight to the dump. But all this, when it was all said and done, about six months later, because this stuff didn't sell overnight, because, you know, I, I listen to people on YouTube, it's like I buy stuff, I sell it the next day. You can do that for so long, but actually, for me, when I was in the business, actually holding inventory, building inventory, long tail selling was just much better for us. But you know, pick your poison. But $25,000, it was a mistake. I was fucking around, playing with someone. So what I'm telling you is, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Will they all work out and make you 25,000? Of course not, that's not gonna happen. But you will learn so much more by doing that than playing it safe. Looking, you know, thinking you're so, because I see people play this game that I'm smart and I'm being cautious. No, you're just a coward. You're just a scared little bitch. You, you are just afraid to fail. And I said this the other day, I'm not afraid of failure. I'm not meaning I'm in love with failure or do I want to get married to failure. That's not what it means. It's just, I am not afraid to fail. I'll try some stuff. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And I'll keep moving on. And I'll take that knowledge because when I go have that experience, because that's everything we do is an experience. I get that experience and I put it over here and I learn from it because I'm telling you, you will learn so much from this method, much more than just sitting at home, kind of like playing it safe, looking for something super certain that 
that sure thing, that guarantee that it's not happening. It's just not happening. Now, another thing that happens when you make mistakes is you become one of two people. You become a courageous person because your resolve deepens. The ability for you to deal with adversity deepens. You become a better person. The other person you can become is just an abject loser. You start creating these self-fulfilling prophecies of doom, gloom, and failure. A friend of mine on Facebook, you know, he was all caught up in Obama and all this other stuff. I did the government shutdown video because per per personally, I think this shit's just stupid. You have a bunch of grown-ass men acting like children on both sides. The Republicans started this shit. They own it. But hey, Democrats, they got, they got blood on their hands, too. And the thing is, you know, someone's like both sides are going to suffer. And I do believe that. But the Dem the Republicans, they're going to catch most of the blame. And if these fools allow us to go to the fiscal cliff, it's going to be real interesting. But with that, I look at how. All of that stuff goes on and people get caught up. He got so caught up, he starts, he, it's like he, he, he fell into his bad habits. Like they were talking about Jay Cutler this weekend playing ball. You know, he's got the new coach, he, they're working on his mechanics. And then he start falling back in these bad habits and start making these same, these old mistakes that are not beneficial for the team. That's what this guy did. I was like, you know, go, man, go. You're making money. You had the best month ever since you've been in business. Then he got caught up in the politics thing. Like I said, I watch it to a degree, but I'm not going to do a political channel. Probably not even going to do that many videos. Maybe on the other channel, I'll talk about stuff. But you get absorbed by that stuff and lose your focus. It isn't that the opportunities are not out there. It's just you're not paying attention to them because you have married yourself to some bullshit. I vote. There's a lot of people like, I don't vote. I vote. I feel if you're going to bitch, you need to go vote. That's my right to bitch. So there are many people who don't participate in the process. And when I'm not talking, you know, when I'm talking about po politics, many similar people don't participate in life. They don't participate. I was having this conversation at breakfast this morning with uh, someone I've known like two years. The best way to help yourself in this economy, in this matrix, is to start a business. I don't want to do it. I've heard it's like, hey, everyone's not cut out for a business. If your ass is fit to eat, drive a car, have a place to live, you're a fucking fit to start a business. There is no, you know, there's, it's hard. Yes, it's, it's hard. In the beginning, when you don't know shit, it is excruciating hard. But it's worth it. Because I am looking at people who are like living in what I call stark terror. You have a job, you don't know, you, there's rumors that people are going to be laid off. You're dealing with all of that with the regular stress of life. And I've been there. When that, that rumor circulates, you start thinking, man, how can I pay my mortgage? How can I pay? What can, we're, we're, how are we going to get food? You start thinking all that doom and gloom, and it sucks the energy out of you. It takes away necessary energy that you need to be productive, to be creative, to live your life. It takes that stuff away, and you become consumed with it that you will cre create this self-fulfilling prophecy. I've seen it a million times. I have been caught up in it. I, I quit a job, a good job, because of some political bullshit that was going on in my department that had nothing to do with my dumb ass. I got caught up. And I got so caught up that when I realized what I did, I humbled myself and I went back and asked for my job back and I got it. Because I was stupid. I was totally stupid. And I see people doing that. You know, like here on YouTube, you know, getting on teams with people. You don't even know. 
people who could be criminals, people who you have you thinking that they have these wonderful lives and they're living in some roach infested place and they're eating crackers and cheese whiz, but you think that they're balling because they told you so because you're easily sucked in. Because, you know, to get on that subject again, this is October and I said in January when a lot of this stuff was going on that 75% of these people would be gone in six months. It's more like 85%, maybe 90%. They're gone. They'll do a video, they'll disappear, they'll pop back up. You know what They don't have enough stuff going on. Because see, when you get caught up in bullshit, and this is one of the reasons that I didn't get with response videos, and I didn't, you know, I was like, you know, if they did something egregious, I just reported them to YouTube and move the fuck on. Because doing that type of stuff does not benefit you financially. It doesn't benefit you at all. It does nothing to put money in your pocket. Nothing. And if you get caught up, the, act, the opposite's gonna happen. Money will come out of your pocket. You'll lose money because you are distracted. You're not focused. And then you become the epitome of the scared little bitch. You're out here doing all this stuff, but you, your heart is filled with uncertainty. I sit back and I just watch. I never comment because I don't sell on eBay. I don't sell on Amazon. And I just see the comments about eBay every day. These motherfuckers. I, I remember and I don't want to be part of that anymore. I removed myself from the eBay equation in 2006. Couldn't deal with it anymore. And, you know, in full disclosure, if you're a reseller, it's a necessary evil. I, it's not something that I go, hey, go ahead and do eBay. It's like, hey, you need to do it. You need to you know, mitigate your risk. You need to be on eBay. You need to be on Amazon. It's not something that I'm like cheering to recommend. It's like a necessary evil because they dominate the market. And for certain things, it's the best place and the only place that you can sell certain things. It is what it is. It's ugly. It's, I hate it. And going to making mistakes. People thought leaving eBay was making a mistake. People thought getting out the storage auction business was making a mistake. I have learned that if you continue to keep on keeping on, learn from your mistakes, and don't become destroyed when stuff doesn't turn out the way you want to, you can become amazingly successful. Amazingly successful. But if you get caught up and if I make a mistake, people are going to laugh. And they may. They may laugh. They may talk about you. You might be the butt of jokes. You might be one of the funniest people. You know, they may laugh at you. Many uh, people that are very successful were laughed at. Arthur Blank and uh, Bernie Marcus, they took their idea to their higher-ups. They got laughed out the office. <laughs> yeah, Blank, the guy that owns a football team now. Yeah, that guy. They got laughed out the office. I was like, this shit's not going to work. <laughs> they work for Handy Dandy. I remember that growing up in Alabama. Handy Dandy's for everywhere. They took that concept and they were like, no, we ain't going to do that. And they said, we like it so much, we're going to do it ourselves. And the rest is history. So understand, going out, doing something different. Now, I'll talk about something else. I saw this comment a little while ago. It's like, so you're in the t-shirt business. I am in any business that legally and ethically puts money in my pocket. And that, century, that comes from what I'm already doing. T-shirts are part of a larger piece of action. I mean, it could be a standalone business at some time. Maybe not. And I love T-shirts. That shit's fun. You will see so many T-shirt designs from me. You're going to be laughing your ass off. Because where I'm at now, and once again, this is taking a chance, possibly making a mistake. I am moving all of my efforts training, teaching to help people learn how to make money while also maintaining a life. When I was in the storage auction business, I made a lot of money. Didn't have much of a personal life. I had to, you know, in, you know, mesh up dating and stuff with working. I didn't really have much of a personal life. And I didn't really understand it because the thing is, when you are driven by money, and I was driven by money to the degree I was mostly driven by the curiosity of finding all this shit in units that your objectivity gets clouded. It gets totally clouded. 
So the whole deal now is how do I make as much money as possible and maintain a sane lifestyle? You know, I'm not going to give you this work ba work life balance bullshit. I don't think it's possible in a startup. If you're starting a brand new business, there is no work life balance. It's work, 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 work. You may work like an insane ninja maniac for two years and that two years may yield you a lifestyle that others will envy for the next 40. That's the world we live in. So my thing is the balance. How do I make a lot of money? Maintain freedom, most importantly, control my time, and enjoy myself. So, you know, t-shirts is fun, and I am pushing everything. And this is something else that a lot of people don't understand. I hated going to the flea market. In 1998, 99, either fall of 98, whenever 99, I joined eBay. I have been an online kid since day one. When I used to live in Clayco, Clayton County, a long time ago, I was the first person in my neighborhood to get DSL. I was on the waiting list. I'm an early adapter for some things. I've been online, if you go from 1999, we're going on, whoa, good grief. 15, about 17 years. When you had everything, yeah, about 17 years. When you, you know, I bought my first computer, it was like 3,800 bucks in like 1998. Got the top of the line. So understand, I have been about leveraging the power of the net ever since I heard about the net from mostly a resale perspective. Now I'm on a creator perspective. Create stuff, build stuff, make stuff, be a producer. I did a video for, you know, the hustler's mindset, producer versus consumer. I am primarily a producer mindset. I produce 95% more than I consume. It's a different life. It's a different way of looking at things. And when you become a producer, or if you could just 25% produce and consume 75%, because most people are consumers. They're like 95% consumers. Think about that. What power do you, you know, people like, you know, as a consumer, you have power. No, as a consumer, you have choice. You could tell a company, I don't like that product. You can get your money back. You can do a charge back. <laughs> Big whoop. As a producer, you could create a lifestyle. I don't shop on Saturdays because I hate crowds. You won't, you know, if you see me in the mall or something on Saturday, it's because I have to be there or I'm just bored. That rarely happens. I've created a lifestyle where I don't have to go into traffic during rush hour because I hate traffic. See where I'm going? As a producer, you create the lifestyle that you want versus inheriting a lifestyle that's dictated to you by your consumption habits. This is what I learned from making mistakes. You know, and the future is bright. Do you know in 2011, I think this was the last time the numbers were out, online commerce was about 9 to 11% of all commerce. Now, a big part of that is Amazon has 30% of that 9 to 10%. Do you know how wide open that is? That's too, it's incredibly wild. There's so much that's coming down. There's so much that's coming down. And if you are not afraid to make mistakes and you want to be part of this, it's going to be fucking awesome. The things that are happening right now. But if you're on the sidelines, shaking like a scared little bitch, you're going to miss out. And then you're going to be one of those people with your nose pressed against the glass, lips stuck out, resentful of the success of other people because you did not take a chance. You were afraid. You were scared. You were so afraid to fail that ultimately you fail to have the life that you desire. Now, how about that when you really think about it? All right, this is Glendon Cameron, and I will see you on the good side.